everybody. Today is Tuesday and we are getting closer and closer to returning back to school for in-person classes. So me and Miss Bolin are really excited about that. We're getting our room ready. We're putting some cute little decorations on your desk that Miss Bolin has worked very hard on making. So we hope that that's something kind of neat that you all will like when you come um, to school next week. And we hope that we will get to keep them on our desks that you all, you know, leave it alone. And we can leave it on the desk so it looks nice. <laughs> and it's something real cute and decorative. So if you're coming in person, you'll get a little surprise on the front of your desk when you come to school next week. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our calendar this morning. And we are still in the ninth month of the year. Remember, there are 12 months in a year. So let's just quickly go over those 12 months. If you know the names of those months, say those with me. Ready? We have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. September, October, November, December. And the month that we are in right now is the month of September. We have that at the top of our calendar, so let's say that in a complete whole sentence. Ready? Listen to me first. Put my hands at my chin. Be really good listeners. When I point to you, it's your turn. So here is our sentence. The month is September. Very good. There are seven days in a week. All seven of those days are listed near the top of our calendar. And we also have them listed over here. So at any time uh, when we start writing in the room, if you need to write one of the days of the week, you can look on our calendar or you can look on our list of days of the week that are posted in the front of the room. So real quick, let's go over our seven days of the week. If you know the names of the week, say them with me. We have Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So yesterday's day of the week was Monday. What day comes after Monday? Do you know? If you know, yell it out. Okay, so today's day of the week is Tuesday. So let's say that. The day of the week is Tuesday. Very good. Yesterday was the 21st day of September, so let's start at the number 1, and we're going to count forward and see what number comes after 21. So here we go. Ready? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So today is the 22nd day of September. And looking at our pattern, we have an A, B pattern where A is orange, green is our B color. Every time an orange is there, a green follows it. And every time there's a green, an orange comes next. So we had orange yesterday, so today we need green. And remember that our shape this month on our calendar is a circle. Remember that a circle is a flat shape. It does not have any lines. It's made from a curve. It doesn't have any corners, no sides, no corners. This is a circle. And I'm going to write the number 22 on our green circle. And I put a 2 in the 10s place. That tells me that the number 22 has two groups of 10. Let me rewrite this 2. Because that doesn't match my other 2s. And I'm OCD about things matching. So I'm going to put a 2 in the 10s place. That tells me two groups of 10 in the number 20. And then a 2 in the 1s place. So that is the number 22. 2 in the tens place, 2 in the ones place. So I'm putting it underneath the day of the week, Tuesday, after the number 21. Okay? Now we have our year, and the year is 2020. So let's say that in a sentence. The year is 2020. Okay, so 
let's say our whole date we're going to do the day of the week, the month, the number of day in the month, and the year. So here we go. Ready? Today is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. Very good. Okay, now we're going to go over and count our straws this morning. We count straws every day that we are in school or any day that is counted as a school day, even if we're not in school like right now, we're doing virtual, but it's still a school day. We're just not actually here in the building. So yesterday was our 15th day of school. We had five straws in the ones place, one group of 10 in the tens place or 10 straws in the tens place. So today I'm getting a straw out for today's day of school, putting it into the ones place. And now I'm going to get those out and count them. Remember, when we count straws, or any other object for that matter, we have the set of those um, objects. And we're going to move each object away from the set as we count it so that I know these straws have been counted, these have not. So we're going to start counting our straws. We're in the ones place, so we're counting by one. Ready? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we had five. We just added one more straw. So we had five, added one more. That now gives us six in the ones place. So I'm taking out the number five, replacing it with a number six card. Then I'm going over to the tens place. I'm getting those straws out. In the tens place, we put our straws into groups of ten. So the number that's here in the tens place, right here, this card tells us how many groups of ten we have. So right now we only have one group of ten. So there's a one there to show us one group of ten. Okay? So now we're going to count all of our straws. And I have to get up and keep my screensaver from coming on. So we're going to count all of our straws, and I'm starting with the largest place, which is the tens place. We're going to count by tens first, and then we're going to go back to counting by ones. So ready? We have 10. Now we're going to ones. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have 16 straws. We have one group of 10. So it's in the tens place, six straws in the ones place, and that gives us the number 16. That's how many days of school we've already had, okay? So now we're going to back up and go to our counting chart. We're starting counting at the top of our chart on the left-hand side. We're counting forward by one, so we're moving our pointer finger from the left to the right, working our way on our chart from the top down to the bottom. Remember, when we are counting forward, we're really counting what direction? Up. As we're counting forward, the numbers are getting bigger. Each number we say is bigger, larger, greater than the number we said before it. So we're starting at 1, and we're going to count forward and see what number comes after 15. So here we go. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. After fifteen comes sixteen. So here again is the number sixteen. A one in the tens place, a six in the ones place. This number matches the number on our straw chart. So we've been in school for 16 days and we just counted forward to the number 16. Now, yesterday we talked about two new letters. Remember what they were? They were letters K and L. So this morning we're going to go through our alphabet. We're starting with the letter A and we're going to go all the way through and stop on the letter L. We're going to say the letter name. We're going to do the sound three times. And we're going to say the picture that's on our card up here that matches with that letter and sound. Okay? So listen carefully. When my hand is on my chin, it's my turn, your turn to listen. When I point to you, that's when it's your turn. Okay? So here we go. A. 
G G G G Goose Get my mouse H Helicopter I I I I Igloo J, 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 Jaguar, K, 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 Koala, and L, O, 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 Lemon. Okay, very good. So by the time that you leave kindergarten, you should be able to read or to recognize all of your uppercase letters. You should be able to recognize all of your lowercase letters. And you should be able to tell us all the sounds that each of those letters make. So if you are at home practicing letter recognition, work on your uppercase letters. Then you can work on lowercase letters and also be working on letter sounds because when we start reading in the room you have to be able to recognize letters and you have to know what sound those letters make so when you get to a word and you get stuck on it you can try to sound it out to read the word okay so this morning since we talked yesterday about the letters k and l i'm going to show you how to write those letters on your paper Remember, in kindergarten, most of the time when we write, we have a top line, a middle line, and a bottom line. And do you remember where we start making our letters? Do we start at the bottom? We always start at the top. It might be on the top line. It might be in the middle line. If it's a lowercase letter, a lot of those start on the middle line. Okay? So when we make an uppercase K, we're going to start on the top line and make a straight line down from top to bottom. We pick our pencil up and we're going to move over a little bit on that top line. And we're going to make a slanted line from the top back toward that first line that we made. When we get to the middle line, that's where it should come in, right at the middle. And then from there, we're making another line back out to the bottom line. Okay? So that is the uppercase K. We're starting at the top. We're going from top to bottom. Go back to the top a little bit away from it. Make a slanted line in toward the middle of that line. And then from the middle of that line, we're going to go down and out to the bottom. So there's uppercase K. Lowercase K, we start it the same way. We're doing a straight line from top to bottom. This time, instead of coming to the top line, we're going to start at the middle line and go about to the middle section of that line that's in between the middle and the bottom line. And then from there, we're going to come out to the bottom. All right. So one more time, we're going top to bottom for lowercase k. Start a little bit out away from that line at the middle. We're making a slanted line in towards the center of that bottom half of that line and then from that point we're going back out to the bottom just like that so we have uppercase k's here lowercase k's over here all right now l's are super easy 
it's just lines. Like K's were easy because they're just lines. We have some straight lines and some slanted lines, but L's are just straight lines. So uppercase L, let me get a different color. Just to make it a little bit more colorful, I'm gonna use red for our L's. Okay, so uppercase L, we're starting at the top. We're doing a straight line down from top to bottom. And then we're just gonna slide over on that bottom line for our uppercase L. All right, so we're gonna go top to bottom and then slide over on that bottom line to make uppercase L's. Now lowercase L's are super easy. One straight line and you're done. So for lowercase L, we're going from top to bottom. And that's it, lowercase L. One more time, lowercase L, we're just making a straight line, top to bottom. So we have uppercase K's here, lowercase K's here, uppercase L's here, lowercase L's over here. So practice writing letters K and L today. By now, you should have practiced writing letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. So if you've not practiced writing any of those, practice writing those from top to bottom line, please remember, okay? All right, now yesterday we had a um, sight word. So we got our first sight word yesterday. Does anybody remember what it was? It's also a letter in our alphabet. So this sight word is a letter and it's also its own word. So our word yesterday was the word I. Do you remember when we used the word I when we're talking about who? Ourself. So I might would say, I am a girl. I like pizza. Um, I am a teacher. Okay. So when we're talking about ourself, we use the word I. Since it's taking the place of our name, it's a special word like our name is, so it's always uppercase or capitalized anytime that we are writing that word. Even if it's in the middle of a sentence, if you're using the word I, it will be an uppercase capital I. Okay, and remember I showed you the picture card and it had the word I right here highlighted. And it says, I have a big family. So there's the picture of the family. It's probably this little guy right here that's saying that sentence. He's taking a picture of his family. So there's the sight word, I. So practice writing the word I. I have some activities in Google Classroom um, that are practicing Finding the word I, I think you had to type it a couple of times, maybe highlight it. So practice using the word I in sentences today. Practice writing the word I, just practice using the word I. Practice reading the word I. So if you're at home, mom and dad get you an index card and write that word on that index card and just flash it to them and ask them what that word is. What's this word? What's this word? And just let them read it over and over and over and over and over again, okay? All right, now I am gonna read you a story this morning or afternoon or really in reality, it'll probably be about seven o'clock tonight before this video even uploads on the YouTube because it takes forever, but we're trying our best. So if you're a day behind on lessons, that's fine because it doesn't upload until late anyway, so it's okay. So today we're gonna be reading the story called Building With Dad. And this book is a little bit different. It's an up and down book. So this book, this is the front cover. I have my back cover here. And this time my spine of my book is running alongside at the top of the book, okay? Now, this book has an author. Remember that the author is the person who writes the words to the story. So the author's name is Carol Nevius, and it was illustrated by Bill Thompson. So the author writes the words, the illustrator does what? Draws the pictures, okay? So I'm gonna scoot just a little bit closer so you can see the pictures a little bit better. And this is called Building with Dad. And this week we're talking about families. And this is a story about a little guy and his dad. And what do you think they're gonna, going to be doing in the story? 
Well, the title says Building with Dad. So let's see what they're going to do. So I open it up and I have my title page. It's a page in the book. Usually the first page in the book is the title page. It has the title again, Building with Dad. It again has the author's name and the illustrator's name. Okay? All right, so let's listen to this story and see what they're building. So here's my picture, my first picture. I've got my words at the bottom of the page. Okay, let's go for a ride, my dad says to me. I'll show you the spot where your new school will be. Would you like to help? You can visit the site. We'll check the construction to make sure it's right. So I hear some rhyming words. Do you hear some rhymes when I was reading that page to you? So this dad is going to take his son to a construction site where a new school is going to be built. All right. Let's see what happens next. Ooh. Look at this big piece of equipment. We wait till the groundbreaking work has begun. Watch bulldozers roar, pushing dirt, diesels run. So this big piece of heavy equipment is called a bulldozer. You see that? It's got tracks that it's running on so it can get around in the dirt good, and it's got this big thing on the front that pushes and moves the dirt all around. We ride in the dump truck that's bringing in fuel. I push the red button to make the rocks spill. So a dump truck can have multiple jobs. It can take and haul dirt away from a construction site, or in this case, it says it's bringing in fill. So it's bringing in some filler. It's bringing in some rocks to fill in some spaces that they've dug from. So this is a picture of a dump truck, and it's dumping out the rocks from the back of the truck. I help Dad's mechanic. We count all her wrenches and watch as the backhoe digs long pipeline trenches. So this piece of equipment is called a backhoe. And my boys, their granddad recently just purchased a backhoe. And he's gonna be planning on doing some work and they've ridden inside the cab of that backhoe and they think that's the neatest thing ever was is to ride in the cab of that backhoe. At noon, horns toot toot, the crew needs to eat. Dad lets me climb up in the earth mover's seat. So if it's noon, that's 12 o'clock, and they need to eat. So I bet all the workers are hungry, and they're going to go eat some lunch. So the dad's sneaking the little boy up and going to let him in the driver's seat of that piece of equipment. Dad's giant grater smooths over the ground. His steamroller follows to crush the dirt down. So this is a steamroller and it's crushing down the dirt. See how nice and smooth it is where they just rode? That big wheel on the front right there pushes real hard on that dirt, pats it down, rolls it, and makes it real smooth. Cement mixer turns out gray glop by the yard. The foundation forms, it sets up and dries hard. So this is a cement mixer, and you all may have seen a cement mixer. It's got a big thing on the back of it, and it's constantly turning, and they're spraying water in there to keep that cement wet, and they drop it down that tube and fill it in, and it hardens to make a good sturdy foundation for a building. Cranes are like arms, lifting girders and brick. Crews bolt, nut, and mortar them solid and thick. So there's a little boy looking up into the sun, and he can see all the steel that's being put together. And cranes, that's probably the arm of a crane, actually, is what that is, that's working. Zip, zap. The power tools fasten the ply. The new roof is waterproof. School will be dry. I hope the roof's waterproof. If not... There's going to be a lot of kids get wet, aren't there? So he's got his hard hat on. He's being safe on that construction side, isn't he? The frames are the rib bones, a skeleton wall, outlining the classrooms, the gym, and the hall. 
So these are outside of each room and laying out the building and the um, plans for the building. The team works inside welding pipes using fire, sealing windows and tile, running cables and wire. So they're having to do all kinds of stuff inside the building to get the school ready. The teachers have meetings. Dad's last workers rush. Our waxed floors are gleaming. The toilet's all flush. Thank goodness for that. And there he is wiping the floor down. Look how shiny the floor is. They just waxed it. Nice and shiny. The bucket truck lifts us to check the new sign. I spell out each letter. I'm proud this school's mine. So there's an S and a C and an H and an O. And I bet they'll put another O and an L to spell school. And that kind of looks like our school, the bricks. And we've got the name of our school on the front. Construction is finished. Dad packs his last tool. The children arrive. It's the first day of school. So this is a brand new building and all the kids are coming in. They look happy to be coming to school and it's brand spanking new. And when I'm a grown up, I hope I will be a builder like dad with a helper like me. He was a pretty good helper, wasn't he? So listen, the school that you're going to be coming to, Cumberland Elementary School, I remember when it was built. That's how old Miss Saylor is because when this school was built, I came here. It was a brand new school and I came here in the second grade. That was in 1992. Yeah, you don't have to be calculating to figure out how old I am. I'm pretty old. I've been here a while. I've been here since the building opened, literally, because I was in the second grade. And my classroom was right across the hall from where our room is right now. And I remember when I came in this building, I thought, oh my gosh, it smells new. Everything's clean. And my favorite, most favorite room in the entire school building was the library. Because at the time, we didn't even have computers to get in the library to check our books out. We had a big stage right there where all the computers are in the library now. And we used to put on plays and our librarian, oh, she was so sweet. Her name was Miss Mike is what we called her. It's Mary Jo Abradovich. And I'm throwing her name out there because she was the absolute best. We thought she was so fun. But now they've took that stage out and they've added some computers in there. We didn't have computers. We used to have to go to the card catalog and roll it out to search for our books. So there's been a lot of advancement in technology since the building opened. But I remember coming in, and it was brand new, and I thought, oh, my gosh, this school is so cool because I went to Benham in kindergarten and first grade. So all this was new when we came in, and I thought it was the biggest school I had ever been in in my life. So I remember when they were building it. So it kind of puts me in mind of this book, seeing all the construction when they were doing a new school, because I got to see that too. So we done calendar center this morning. We counted this morning. We did letters and sounds for letters A through L. Um, we wrote letters K and letter L. We talked about our sight word I, and we read a story. So lots of things happened within a very short 30 minute period of time. So we will see you guys tomorrow. Work on your Odyssey Wear. Work on Google Classroom. Be sure to check in with me. And parents, look for a note that will be on Dojo either this afternoon or first thing in the morning that's going to give you some information about coming back to school next week. Okay? If you need anything, let us know. We'll see you guys tomorrow.